I thought I'd bring you back just to show you the, the, the uh, finishing off the bottom and the top of this. Um, the epoxy is fully cured. It's been about two weeks. Uh, I like to let it get good and hard. Um, and you can see there's some slight imperfections here and I'm going to take all this back to natural wood. I left enough meat in the bottom to do that. And, uh, and then I'll reverse it and do the top. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. You'll see that it's, that it's gone out around ever so slightly. We're about 800 RPMs. I just want to really skin this off a little bit. All I got is uh, an old skew chisel that I put a burr on it, really fine burr actually. Because this, uh, this piece of wood has got some spalting in it, so it's it real susceptible to tear out. And I'll have to go a little further. kill it I'm gonna sand this and then we'll flip it around and do the top all right I got it uh, sanded and uh, I put a coat of uh, sanding sealer on it nitrocellulose sanding sealer and I got to change out chucks here so we'll go ahead and take this off I know you can't see as much I won't use this for long but to reestablish my shoulder in case I get a catch I'm just gonna Make sure I have extra support. Okay, yeah, we're probably going to go around around 800 RPMs.
more. See, I'm, you see this is where the, the actual acrylic paint bled into the wood grain. You can see it here. So it's leaving an uneven line. I'm not real fond of that. I'm going to have to do something different there. Maybe trim that with a, a burn line or something. Um, when, I, when I do these... Uh, I seal them with a nitrocellulose sealer, but this one happened to have some spalting in it. Uh, let's try uh, maybe a tiny groove, and I'll either have to paint the groove or kind of design it on the fly here, but it might look good in silver. Maybe that's what we'll do. take some alcohol ink and color this groove silver but I want to do that after I've sealed this because uh, otherwise it just do the same thing again <laughs> hopefully I get it sealed I'll probably put two coats of sealer on it just to get through that or so it doesn't uh, absorb into that uh, spalting there As you can see the Spalting here. Okay, I think we're going to go for the rest of it. Get this out of the way.
looks pretty good. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and sand this off camera and then uh, I'll bring it back. Alright, what I'm going to try and use here is, uh, is Tim Holtz stuff. It's uh, Ranger uh, alcohol inks. This one happens to be a silver. I got the little metal ball in there. And I'm going to use a real fine liner brush. My palette. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work because that's really a fine line. And I, I'm afraid if I get it on there. I've got some uh, ice propyl alcohol also and a little bit of paper towel just in case I get some on the epoxy. We'll see what happens here. Worst case scenario, we can go back to the lathe and do it again. much uh, done with this. Um, as you can see, uh, I went through on this particular one, I sanded the epoxy. Um, typically uh, the final coat, I'll leave it alone. Um, that way I get that real high gloss finish, but I was trying to get away from that a little bit with this one. This was more of a semi-gloss to a matte finish. So what I did is I sanded it through um, 800 grit and then I wet sanded it with a thousand grit and um, then I won't put a coat of uh, Renaissance wax on it and uh, that's pretty much it you can see it's got a it's still got a sheen to it but nothing like it you can see through into the color a lot easier uh, with the regular epoxy finish unsanded in your final coat it, there's a lot of glare uh, we found that photographing them is it's kind of tricky. So, um, let me turn it around a little bit. You can see the other side. In the bottom. You can see the grain from the wood still comes through. See it here. Okay.